Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Arthur Hatton. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I'm also a visual artist. And uh, I'm starting this channel and doing this video to demonstrate some techniques that are helpful for me um, as a clinician as I'm working with people and also just to teach people how to be creative mindfully, um, uh, which is a little different from other types of visual um, processes. So um, hopefully this is helpful to you and if it is helpful to you, you can like the video. And if you want to see more content like this in the future or even get in, um, get in on my live streams, um, you can subscribe to the channel. So uh, this is a technique uh, I call branches and crosses. And that's because of the structures that are going to be uh, featured on here. But I'll explain that in a second. Uh, what I found is when I try to get people creative in therapy, Sometimes, especially if they're not an artist already, um, they have a lot of negative self-talk. So they'll tell themselves like, oh, I'm not creative. I'm not a good artist. I can't draw a stick figure. That's really common. So, um, so people can like tell themselves they're not good. And I think that that can sometimes sabotage uh, what could otherwise be a really helpful activity. Um, let me close this up here. Also, I've noticed when I give them too much structure, uh, so there's a structure problem. So if I give people too much structure, like say I give them a mandala and have them color it in. A lot of psychologists do that, and it can be really nice to just color in a mandala. Problem is, once you're done coloring it, you don't have a piece of artwork that feels like this is my artwork. You don't have ownership of it. But sometimes when I give people just a blank piece of paper and just say, hey, just color something, color how you feel, People get paralyzed because they're like, oh, I don't know what to put and this doesn't really describe me and this doesn't you know, describe my feelings or whatever. So I'm just going to take away all that um, pressure to do it perfectly um, and come up with something on your own. So I developed this branches and crosses technique to give people a process. Um, it's just a step-by-step -step, um, structure where they can um, go through the steps and do the branches, do the crosses, and do the color. Um, so it takes away that paralysis of like, oh, what am I supposed to do? But also, um, when you're done, it's a unique thing that came out of you. Um, and there's an infinite way that you, uh, infinite ways of um, creation. So I can never predict how it's going to look when I'm done. And that's the cool thing about it. Um, it's just a way to kind of just see what comes out of yourself mindfully as you do artwork. So um, I'm going to show you the materials that I use and then you can try it at home. And I'm just giving you, I didn't, I didn't get this from a textbook. Um, I just kind of made it up just based on my intuition and my experience as a psychologist. So if you want to swap out materials, you can, if you want to try different structures, if you want to take it in a different direction, feel free to experiment. This is just the method that I've developed that I found to be very helpful for me. So I'm gonna start out with this paper. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of expensive and cheap versions of everything that I'm using uh, because maybe you want materials that are more affordable. I get that. Um, but this is Arches paper that I have. And I really think Arches is the best for me. 100% pure cotton. Um, and if you're going to spend money on something, spend money on the paper. I found that 100% pure cotton paper is just so forgiving. You can draw on it with pencil and erase and it doesn't destroy it like it does cheaper paper. It can also take a lot of layering. And uh, it is a little bit more expensive, but I consider it worth it. So here's the Arches paper. This is an 8x10 Arches block. Here's my paper towel if I, if I need to dry my brush. Um, my brushes, I'm using these Trakel. These are the Nick Rungi um, signature brushes. You can't tell because the I've used it so much the, the words have rubbed off. But um, they're a little pricey. I really like them, but um, maybe they're too pricey for you. And with watercolors, brushes, you don't have to spend that much money to have a good brush. If you're going to spend money, spend money on the paper. Here's an affordable version. Um, I really like these Princeton Velvet Touch round brushes. So that's 
an affordable alternative for brushes. It's just a round brush. This is a Uniball Vision pen. It's waterproof, um, and that's important. So whatever you use pen-wise, just make sure it's waterproof, or else when you put the water on top of it, the ink will bleed. Um, this is Uniball Vision Fine, and I got this from Peter Sheeler, who sometimes uses these in his artwork. He does these really cool, cute landscapes where he does an ink landscape and then paints over it with watercolors. So, yeah, Uniball. Some other options. This is a Pitt Artist Pen by Faber-Castell. I really like these, actually. I like the way they feel in my hand. But uh, for this, I like to use the Uniballs better. But... This is good too. And then finally, this is really famous, the Micron pen. So you can get that too, and this will work just fine. Finally, what kind of paint am I using? Well, here in my palette, I've got a combination of Daniel Smith and Winsor and & Newton paints. And uh, they're the good kind, kind of the expensive kind. You can get them in tubes. So this is the Winsor & Newton one. Here, I'm going to show you the camera. Okay, it's not can't see it. <laughs> All right, so here's the, the tube. It looks like this, and you can get them at art stores. Um, and you really don't need that many paints, so I would say get a couple really nice paints. You can get three or four and be good. But if you want a full range and you want something a little more affordable, here's a Cotman. This is a Winsor Newton Cotman set, and it's got different colors in it. And you can see I've used some of these a lot. But once I up, kind of upgraded to the better paints, I, I, I don't use these quite so much anymore because um, they're not quite as good as the expensive ones, but still pretty decent. Okay, <clears throat> so that's all the materials, and now we're gonna, oh, and a water cup here. And just as a warning, if you've got drinking water and paint water, just put them on different ends of the table. Just do me a favor, trust me on this. Okay. So now, how do you do it? So I'm taking my um, favorite pen here, Uniball Vision. The first thing I'm going to do is draw some branches. The branches can look however you want. It could look like snowflake branches or a tree or just a branch or a plant. I just like to do like a really minimalistic kind of a symbolic tree sort of you'll see what what I'm doing but the important thing is that I'm centering myself and I'm breathing I'm just noticing what my body is telling me and I'm not gonna put too much rules on myself as I go I'm gonna listen to how the pen sounds on the paper I'm even gonna try to smell the paint sometimes there's a little paint smell um, and I'm just gonna see how the structures go down and try to take in every sense that I can as I'm doing this. Now, as I work, I might notice that my mind judges me. Oh, that doesn't look right. Oh, you're not a very good artist. Oh, you know, um, you can't draw a stick figure. Okay, <laughs> just had to throw that in. Um, and when my mind judges me and I notice my mind judging, I just acknowledge my mind and I say, thank you mind for trying to help. I know my mind is trying to help in some way, but it's not doing a very good job. So let that judgment come and then go, and then I'm back to my work on my paper. So here's some branches. I'll start down here like maybe it's a stem. I have to admit, one of the reasons I like these pens is I like how it sounds as it goes down. So here's one of my trees. That kind of looks cool. Maybe I'll have a cross, crossing branch there. Ooh, look at that. That's cool. Okay, that's tree number one. Now I'll do more branches over here. So maybe I'll elevate it just a little bit.
What are the rules for how I'm putting it down? I don't know. Just follow my intuition. What does my intuition say? The two, two trees are crossing each other right there. That's interesting. This tree is looking a little sparse. What if I add it a little bit more like that? Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. And now my intuition says, okay, I'm done. I'm just listening to my body and my body at some point just says, okay, you've got enough. And maybe I would have differently done, done it differently, but I'm letting that judgment go. I don't need to judge myself more. Okay. So the way that I remember <clears throat> this is the branches kind of represent nature to me. Um, you go outside, you see branching structures all the time in nature and plants and trees. Next, we're going to the crosses. And in my own philosophy, and this doesn't have any bigger meaning like Jungian archetype. It's none of that stuff. It's really just a way for me to remember how to do this. Start with the branches. The crosses represent the way that people impose order or structure onto nature. So when we see a field, we want to make a parking lot or something, or we like to create a landscape where nature kind of follows the rules that we like. And so humans are always trying to impose order on nature. Oh, there's a bug. I don't like that bug. I'm going to kill it. Not intended to be moralizing or judgment, uh, judgmental about that, just an observation. We like to impose order onto nature. So what I'm going to do is superimpose crosses on top of my branches. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll start right over here. This goes down and I'm going to do a wide cross like this. It looks like a big plus. And maybe I want another cross here. This one's going to go down like that. Ooh. So that's creating something interesting there. There's nothing in this space. Maybe I can fill it with something. So here's another cross. And this one's, how about down like this? And then goes across like this. And then another line like this. What if it goes like this? Whoa. Now I'm getting crazy. <laughs> okay. I like how that looks. I really like how that looks. I'm just soaking it in. I like it. No crosses over here. Maybe I'll put another cross here. Here's a cross. And it's going to go across like this. And maybe there's another line right like this. And again, I'm just following my intuition. OK. And now I'm done. Okay, that's my drawing. Again, how do I know I'm done? Because my body is telling me that it's done. I'm not gonna question myself or say, oh, but it's not symmetrical or it's not balanced or you know, trying to adjust it to make it look aesthetic because then I'm getting caught up in my judgmental mind. I'm really just experiencing what it's like to put things down on the paper, that's all. I can do judgment another time. But this this time is just mindful time. So. so I've chosen two colors. So this is quinacridone pink and hooker's green. And I chose them because they clash. I just wanted them to clash for some reason. And I wanted to see what they look like when they're mixed together. I'm not even 100% sure what it looks like mixed together. Just want to see what they look like. So you see how this drawing creates all these little nooks and crannies and <clears throat> little holes and structures and what I'm going to do is paint in those structures with my paint and I'm just going to find some places where I my body is telling me yeah yeah put some put some color there so I'm going to start with this pink it's a really intense pink color okay 
and I'm just going to look at this piece of paper and just think about where do I want some color? This is a really complex group of structures right here. So I'm thinking, what if we started in this little spot? And what is my body telling me? I can stay in the lines. I can go outside the lines. I kind of want to, okay. I want to go outside the lines there. And it's like this color is just flowing down into this part here. Isn't that cool? And it comes down to a point. Look, down to that little point. I kind of like that. It doesn't look organic, but it looks orderly. I don't know what that even means. I'm not a psychologist. Wait, yes, I am. Okay. But I kind of want to see what it looks like when there's like me more of a gradient, I guess. So what if I did this? Ooh. Okay. So now that creates all these effects in here. Look at that. So that's just interesting to me. It's just visually interesting. I'm curious about what happens. There's no way to predict how these are going to turn out. So every one is just a, a new expression. Okay, I want some pink over here. So what if I start with just like a big messy thing? Because it doesn't have to go in the lines, right? In fact, what if I just... <laughs> okay. Whoa. We're getting crazy. I'm just gonna leave that like that. That looks cool. What if I add like some intense color to it actually? What if I just did this, added some more? Okay, that is cool. That is really cool. Okay, I like that. Cool. I'm not even gonna touch that. I like how that looks. Okay, where else do we want some pink? What if there's some pink? Okay, what if like right here, there's some pink coming down. And what if it's coming down and like flowing out into the space here? Now I'm just going to do a bunch of water. Just adding pure water so it looks all messy. There's a reason I chose watercolor. Because, you know, if you're using oil for this, oil is like changeable and you can spend a long time trying to get it perfect. Whereas watercolor, once the layer's down, it kind of sets and then you have to live with it. But that's more mindful, right? Like that's more like life. You just you have to live with what happens. Look at that. That looks so cool. I love it. So I noticed my mind judging me when I was doing that because I went a little outside of this line. And then I was like, oh, I got outside the line. And my mind was telling me like, oh, you messed up. But I didn't mess up. This is totally free. There's no such thing as messing up in this activity. So I just noticed my mind judging and then I just continued to do my work thanked my mind. Thank you, mind, for trying to help, but you're not really helping. You're not doing a good job. So here's some more of this intense color. Wow. Cool. Okay. And what if it just kind of went down into here? Okay. There we go. I think that's enough pink. My body's telling me it's just sufficient. I got pink in three places. I'm noticing this over here is dry. That's still drying a little bit. So now I'm going to go with this hooker's green and really get a good pool of it going here. Okay. All right. 
get some water too. Now I'm just going to put some of this green down. I really like the color of this green, so as I watch it, I'm, I'm going to just be soaking in what it's like. And for some reason, I just want some green right here. Why? I don't know. Because I do. And then that's going to kind of go down into this space. And what if it stops? What if it just stopped? <laughs> I'm clearly amusing myself with this process. That's the whole point, though. So, What is YouTube other than a place where people just can amuse themselves? Okay, and so I'm just going to gradually let this in. And you know, if you have water, um, watercolor, and you just drop in some water, it can have effects too. Like it can make an effect in the pigment. It's cool. Okay. And for some reason, my mind is saying, How about, what if you just went down here? And it fills in the space and then flies down here. There. Now that's something else. That's cool. And I'm just going to destroy it. Okay. I know I'm like a six year old kid with this stuff, but that's kind of the idea is getting back to that pre judgment brain that you had when you were a kid and you were just doing things for fun. Before school, when you were looking around and people are better than you at something, and then you felt bad like, oh no, somebody else is better than me. This space is just, who cares if someone's better than you? Someone's better than me. Someone's worse than me. It's okay. Okay, so that's a big green structure there. What if there's just some green over here? My mind immediately said, no, it's got to be balanced. you got to have green. And it doesn't have to be balanced. This isn't a priceless commission that I'm doing for somebody. It's just a painting that I'm doing for mindful practice. Okay, see how intense that is? What if I just drop some water in? Just, pff, no, okay. Okay, hopefully somebody out there is gonna be amused by this because I'm having fun here. Ooh, what if I connected to this thing up here? Whoa, all right. So, so far, the green and the pink haven't overlapped very much. So what if I just use this as an opportunity to just overlap? What does the green look like on top of the pink? Let's see. Part of mindfulness is being curious. And I just want to be curious. So what if we just add a little green here? And the green just kind of went down this way. Like that. Let's just follow it out. I'm just following my intuition. My intuition says, what if it's over here? And then I follow my intuition. Okay, so now you got some real overlap. We're just going to see what that looks like. I'm like fading it out sort of with water, because you can do that with watercolor. Okay. Ooh, okay. Wait, that looks good. I'm not going to mess with it. What if I dropped in some intensity, though? Oh, a bug just flew in front. Sorry. Okay. Look at that. Just add some intensity, that's all. Okay. How am I feeling about this painting? I'm going to show you something else because you don't always have to be in the lines, right? I could just like randomly. I'm just going to do a little cloud. Ah, there's a little bug that flew into my studio. Look at this. I'm just like filling some space here. It doesn't go along with any line. It's just a space. That's all. What if I did some over here somewhere? Yep. Kind of makes it look like a tree, right? Because it's green. That's not the intent. But hey, that's what I saw in my painting. Okay. How am I feeling about this? It feels complete to me. 
I don't know why. That's just what my mind is telling me. This feels complete. Except for I do a signature thing. This is a signature move at the end. Okay, so I used green and pink. So I'm going to do some splatters. So I'm going to get some green here and splatter. Ready for this? I just take my hand and just like karate chop. So ready? You ready for this? Okay. See how I made that line? That's interesting. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the pink. Get a lot of water for this. And I'm going to try to maybe do some pink over here. So here we go. And I got some on my wall, and I don't care that much because it'll just wipe off. Okay. All right. I think that's it. This is my painting. This is the branches and crosses technique. And because this is the first video I'm putting on YouTube, I'm going to sign it. <clears throat> and I came up with a convention that might be helpful. So first, I like to sign my artwork, Art, because my name is Arthur. It's kind of a dad joke, I know. But I started doing this when I was a teenager. Art 21. And then because it's branches and crosses, I'm going to do BC. Zero. Zero. This is going to be worth millions one day. I'm just joking. Maybe, but maybe not. That's not the point. The point is just to create something. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I was really young, I loved the Beatles, starting when I was like 12, 13. I just loved the Beatles so much. And I wanted to one day have hair like John Lennon. So when I became an adult and I could do whatever I want, sort of, not really, but <laughs> when I became an adult, I grew my hair like John Lennon, and I noticed that I had a curl right here in my hair that just emerged. And I never knew it was there because usually my hair was shorter, but it just grew into this curl. My hair is generally fine and kind of flat, but this one curl came out. So I was thinking, in my genetics, in my genes, this curl is embedded in there somewhere. It's... It's a, a trait that just wasn't expressed until I grew my hair long. There was something in me that could have gone unexpressed my whole life, but um, I gave it an opportunity to come out. And so when I grew my hair long, it's like, oh, hey, I have this curl in my hair. It just naturally happens. Um, maybe some geneticist will tell me, like, that's not really a thing, and that's fine. <laughs> the point being, um, creativity gives us an opportunity to bring something into the world that we didn't know was there and it came out of us. And so this painting did not exist 30 minutes ago and now it does. And I just did it with my own um, creativity and my own imagination. I didn't plan it beforehand, it just happened. And so I am so looking forward to what all of you create. If you use this um, technique, um, you can tag me on Instagram because I'm really active on Instagram or um, you can just try it and uh, send me pictures of it because I want to see what you come up with too. I'm really pleased with this. I'm happy with myself. I'm proud of it. And I can't wait to create more. And I can't wait to create more with you on this channel. So please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more, if you like the process or just want to see me paint. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.